Okay, 5.2. This is organizing the outcomes. Now, so far we've just flipped a coin or spun a spunner or rolled a die. Just one thing. Okay. Um, in this next section, we're going to look at doing more than one thing at the same time. Um, and so doing, we need to talk about uh, something called an independent event. Uh, an independent event is an event that's not influenced or affected by any other event. So, for example, and the example is, is in there, when you roll a die, right, when you roll a die, let's say I roll it, I get a six. And then I flip a coin. Does me rolling a six on the die, does that affect what I flip on the coin? No, it doesn't, right? Uh, it doesn't matter what number I roll on the die, it's not going to change what I flip on the coin. So they're independent of one another. They don't affect one another. Again, if I flip the coin and I get a head, right, that doesn't affect what I roll when I roll a die. Okay? So independent events do not affect one another. Okay? They don't affect one another. Okay, so make sure you uh, understand this idea of independent event. I'm going to come back to sample space once we've kind of worked through some of these. So this is the example we're going to look at. Um, and when you're organizing your outcomes, we're going to use a table or a, a tree diagram. Those are the two things that we'll kind of look at. And this first one is a, is a table. So this is, and I'll, I'll work with you in class um, setting up these tables. Um, but this is a really good example. So we want to show all the combinations possible when you roll a die, a six-sided die, and you flip a coin. Okay. Now, if I do that, if I do both of those things, if I flip my coin and I roll a die, what are some possible things that could happen? Give me one possible thing that could happen. Okay, so hopefully you said something like, I could roll a, a tails. And, or I flip a tail on the coin and roll a six. So that's heads with a six. If you flipped a, a head on the coin, could you also have rolled any other number on the die? Yeah, totally. Okay. So here in your chart, you could have a heads with a one. You could also have heads with a, of rolled and flipped a heads with a two. Also a heads with a three, heads with a four heads with a 5, and heads with a 6. You could have flipped any of those. Those are all possible outcomes. Okay. Same with tails. If you landed on tails, it could have been tails with a 1, tails with a 2, tails with a 3, tails with a 4, tails with a 5, or tails with a 6. Okay. Those are all possible things that could have occurred. Okay. So it's asking here uh, in the next little bit, how many possible outcomes are there? Well, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 of them. Okay. Now, here's where I'm going to talk a little bit about sample space. It says write the sample space for this combination uh, of events. Okay. And that's exactly what uh, sample space is. If you look here, sample space, all possible outcomes of an experiment. Okay. So... These are all the possible outcomes of an experiment. Let me just change my pen. All of these are my possible outcomes. When you are writing a table, when you're putting a table down, you don't have to rewrite those for me anyways. Okay? The sample space is there. This is the sample space. So you don't have to rewrite it anywhere. You're showing all the combinations. They're right there. Here, I, I do want to show you something kind of neat, though, for coming up with how many possible outcomes there are in an experiment. If you roll a flip a, he, a coin, that's two possibilities, two possible outcomes, right? If you roll a six-sided die, there are six possibilities. And it says here, there's 12 total. Look at that. Look at those three numbers. Two times six equals 12. It's going to work like that every time. If you spin, uh, let's say you spin a spinner and it's got four equal parts, and you um, 
then you flip a or sorry roll a, a five sided die, right? You just multiply those together, and that's how many possible outcomes there will be. Okay. Anyways, we'll probably come back to that in another uh, in another some other parts in the chapter. Now here's a tree diagram. So same thing we're doing, uh, same thing was we're flipping a coin and spinning a spinner. Oh no, we are doing something different. A spinner with three equal sections. Okay. So here's how this will work. So when I flip that coin, there's two possibilities. You can flip a head or a tail. If I flip a head and spin the spinner, if I flipped a head, I could have uh, landed on any of my three equal sections in the spinner. So I could have landed on bear, elk, or salmon. So with a head, I could have landed on a bear, uh, an elk, or a salmon. If I flipped a tail, I could have also landed on a bear, an elk, or a salmon. Right? So um, my sample space is heads with a bear, heads with an elk, or heads with a salmon. Or it could have been tails with a bear, tails with an elk, or tails with a salmon. Okay? So unlike the table, in a tree diagram, you actually have to write out the sample space. So those are all my, my combinations. And there are, um, there are six possible combinations in that one. Okay, okay so that's uh, a look at two different uh, ways of uh, organizing your data, with a tree diagram or using a table. Uh, everyone's got their preference, but you need to be able to do both.